arguably the most important resource on the entire planet. We're surrounded by it every day. Forests cover 30% of all land on Earth. They are unbelievably beautiful, and most of us love to spend time in them. From the very beginning of human history, we have had an intimate relationship with wood. It was burning wood, fashioning it into tools, and building homes from it that started humanity down the path towards civilizing the world. But what many people don't know is that wood may actually be more important in our modern day than it has ever been before. My name is Kelly Connor. I'm the general manager of Northern Operations for Fruit Grower Supply, which means I'm responsible for all of our West Coast timber operations. Uh, I've been in the timber industry for 37 years, mostly in inventory and planning, but I did some civil culture, some research, some engineering. I've kind of been around the block. Fruit Growers has been around for a long time. We were founded in 1907. We have 320,000 acres um, between California, Oregon, and Washington. What the timber industry does is actively manages all the ground that it can. You know, we own these properties for the purpose of revenue producing, but also long-term revenue producing. It's a long-term investment. So managing them keeps them healthy and makes them more resilient to climate change. If they're overstocked, they're much more sensitive to climate change. The roads that we put in there are engineered now for low maintenance, low erosion potential and having roads in the forest is a really good idea because you have access to the forest now. You don't have to just sit back and let it burn when a fire comes or fly in retardant the whole time. You can bring in crews on the roads, you get access. Besides the obvious as a, as a renewable building material, there's a lot of things that people probably don't expect that are made out of not necessarily wood as much as it is the uh, chemicals that come out of wood, the, the, you know, the lignans and cellulose type things that come out of wood or trees. Um, there's chemicals, a lot of chemicals, toothpaste, a lot of rubber type things, medicines. U was one of the big ones that I was familiar with uh, for cancer treatments. There's a lot of those kinds of things, but um, we pride ourselves on, on utilization and we're always pushing for additional utilization. These, you know, these wood engineers are coming up with phenomenal products. In Canada and Europe, they're already building skyscrapers out of it and we're introducing them here to the States. As far as efficiency goes, uh, it's a lot more efficient to produce a building out of wood than it would be for concrete or steel. The, those things take a lot more energy and are extractive. They take the minerals and materials out of the earth and don't put it back. So wood is a lot greener in a lot of ways. And it's because it's a renewable resource, it's, it's almost endless as long as it's managed on a sustainable basis. I'm excited about uh, biochar and bioenergy. It's uh, like charcoal that's made from any, any bio waste material or it has been around for thousands of years, but it's making a comeback as a soil amendment. And it really uh, makes the soil retain moisture and nutrients much, much longer. You, you use much less water in the uh, growing of crops. You can have plastic everything, but that's not sustainable, right? To make this planet last, you know, gotta have wood. Clearly, wood is a resource that is both unbelievably versatile and environmentally friendly. Unfortunately, thanks to misguided regulation and government interference, the harvesting of this incredible renewable resource has seen better days. I'm Lynn West. I came down here in California to log in 1958 and I logged for Lucas Logging for 25 years. There was only one mill at that Syad, I Reed Lumber Company, but there was, uh, let's see, there was four mills, I think it was, at Happy Camp at that time. Two big mills and two smaller mills. Yeah, it was a booming, booming town until the Spotted Owl come in. It just ruined the towns. Happy Camp used to be a booming place. Now there's, what, 900 people maybe? I'm Lonnie West, and I've been in the timber industry for um, 35 years. Started out just as a grunt, setting chokers. Worked my way up to have my own outfit. I had my outfit for 14 years until the uh, federal lands were shut down. By shutting it down, that pretty well killed Siskiyou County. Siskiyou County's 65% federal lands. It just ruined us whole area, their schools, everything, kind of went to pot. Bell probably employed 100 people or close to it. The timber industry around there probably employed 100 or 200 or something. And 
and then all the family, I mean, 90% of the family left. And, and now you go down there, I mean, it's just every other person you see is on drugs or drunk. And why everyone resorts to drugs when there's not good jobs around, I don't know. The wages, the uh, probably the last 20 years, it uh, has stayed the same. And it's uh, somewhat of a dangerous job. They had two that was killed in the 25 years I was there, and uh, some that was hurt pretty, pretty bad. The one that was paralyzed. I smashed my hand almost completely off one time. Luckily, I still have use of it. But, well, one time I seen an old guy peel the whole hamstring muscle off of the side of his femur. And we held them all together, you know, for 45 minutes to help that through. Several people I've known have been killed in the woods and uh, including my brother cutting logs, he was killed. Um, a yarder operator, was a dear friend of mine, he was killed, and several others. It's a, kind of a thankless job anymore, especially when you have environmentalists thinking you're uh, ruining the earth. All these stories about loggers who've been hurt or killed in the woods really hit home for me, because the brother that Lonnie mentioned losing earlier wasn't just some guy to me. He was my father, Kirk West. He was a timber faller who died in a logging accident when I was just 13 years old, leaving behind my mom, myself, and my three little brothers. And as I stand here in this place, I can't help but think that when most people imagine someone with a heroic job, the first thing that springs to their mind is probably someone like a firefighter or a police officer. But that's not the first thing that comes to my mind. Because when I think of someone with a heroic job, my first thought is of a logger. Police officers and firefighters may be tasked with protecting civilization, but without loggers, civilization as we know it wouldn't even exist to begin with. And yet, they will very likely never be thanked for it. I think that's wrong. These are men who get up every morning to do a hard, physically demanding job in some of the most rugged country imaginable. A job that brings us a resource so basic and essential that it is not an exaggeration in the slightest to call it the cornerstone of civilization and the lifeblood of modern society. You may think that distinction should belong to oil, but people were consuming timber products for millennia before oil had even been discovered and will continue to consume them millennia after fossil fuels have gone the way of the dinosaur. From the paper we use every day to the roofs we rest our heads under every night, one can hardly go a few minutes without using a wood product. And the men who bring us those products have literally the most dangerous job in the entire world. No matter how careful and skilled you are, when you're surrounded by the incredible force of falling trees and heavy machinery day in and day out, things can go wrong. Every year, loggers are killed in on-the-job accidents at a rate 40 times higher than the average workplace. In 2012, 64 loggers were killed, a statistic that made loggers a full 82 times more likely to be killed on the job than sworn law enforcement officers, for a salary that is nearly 30% lower. To top it all off, it's not uncommon to hear about loggers facing interference and even terroristic acts of sabotage from misguided environmentalists who wrongly think that they're just out to ruin the woods. Even still, loggers just keep on doing what they need to do. If you ask me, all this stuff makes loggers some of the most criminally unsung heroes on the face of the earth. So next time you're using a wood product, just pause for a second and think about the men who helped bring it to you. Because who knows where we'd be without them. You know, you've been working in the timber industry for 45 years, not 35. Oh.